Next on the list here, we have news courtesy of Annabelle Ross, who actually had a pretty decent um, article that I think I spoke about a few months ago, maybe a year ago, concerning Derek May and some of the heinous, absolutely disgusting allegations that were laced against him. And for the most part, um, the article, if I'm not mistaken, had an immediate sort of effect, I feel like. Some festivals cancelled his bookings, some people kind of distanced themselves from him, but for the most part, it feels like most places just kind of try to play the waiting game, wait until the outrage sort of like simmered before they slowly started to rebook him back at places and stuff, which is really bizarre because if you read that RA article that has several accounts of people who kind of detail what happened to them, what occurred, it's really bad. Like, it's really, really, really bad. There's one thing which I think I've done before in the past where you maybe... Um, you're out and you're you're out and about. You're trying to maybe, you know, hook up with somebody and you might read the signs wrong. And what you thought was an invitation to say hi was actually them saying hi to somebody behind you <laughs> or something like that, right? And that's fucking embarrassing and awful and horrible, right? Or, you know, they go for the handshake, you go for the hug or something, like awkward, weird. But some of the stuff that was alleged with Derek, I think I remember the one story of some lady or some girl going to his room to talk about music with a friend and being a big fan and then suddenly it turning into an essay or thing. That was what I was super disturbing because that was a fan, an absolute doting person who legitimately fought the world of you, who listened to all your tracks, who's got your vinyls, who's watched all your interviews, who follows you on social media, like a proper fan fan. And then you put them through that. It's like, mate, you are a different breed of a person. But anyway, it looks like Annabelle Ross has continued on her investigation uh, behind some of the stuff concerning Derek May and other things. And it's titled On Derek May, Detroit Techno and Toxic Male Solidarity, which I'm going to read to you now. So it says as follows. Carl Craig banned me from reviewing Movement Festival this year, held in Detroit nearly three weeks ago. I wasn't sure if I was going to public to go to gonna go public with this information, but after what happened this weekend, I felt I had to. How can you ban someone from a festival? Can't you just go anyway? Or, or do they have a picture up at the ticket gates and if she tries to come through, they're gonna or and also, or maybe does it mean he told her that she can't do an official review for the festival? So just write anyway and put it on your blog. Why can he stop you from writing stuff or going to places? It's such a bizarre thing to do. And also, what does Cochrane have to do with this? Anyway, this, anyway, let's continue. I was supposed to be writing about Moving Festival for Mixmag, but a few days ahead of the festival, I got a call from my editor. Moving had told him I could no longer review the festival. Oh my God. Craig had given the crew of festival an ultimatum. Him or me. If I was allowed to review the festival, he wouldn't perform. So Craig, Carl Craig, the founder of movement festival or whatever right it seems like here and one of the i guess the main billings over there from being a detroit legend is legitimately giving publications ultimatums because what they dare to write articles exposing that his friend might be a creep this is fucking insane it continues Craig had a headline slot on Saturday night on the Detroit Love Stage he hosted a festival that day and another slot on Sunday night playing back-to-back -back set with James Murphy and that James Murphy from LC Sound System. Hmm. Craig has been intimately involved with Moving Festival since its inception back in 2000, when it was known as the Detroit Electronic Music Festival. He's one of the most celebrated figures in techno, techno, Detroit techno. Of course, Movement was going to choose Craig over me, especially when his ultimatum was delivered in an 11th hour, especially having lost another headliner in Nina Kravitz the days prior. So, you're telling me, in some weird parallel universe, again, the, you have to believe... It depends what you believe in terms of narrative, but let's let's just run with this one narrative. You're telling me that movement were more comfortable with booting Nina Kravitz off of their lineup because she happened to be a sympathizer for flipping Putin. However abhorrent you think it is, but she's from a she's you know in her lap of luxury, you know deciding to support Putin and the invasion of Ukraine without any skin in the game and shit. It's annoying. It's gross. It's disgusting. But again, she's from she's really really away from everything anyway. Being a bit of a troll. You're okay to boot her off the lineup, but Derek May, who's been accused of a string of flipping heinous, you know, essay assaults or whatnot, allegedly, you're okay to keep on the lineup. <laughs> like what? What kind of? If ever there was a, if ever there was, because I don't, I don't actually agree or subscribe to this idea that dance music or electronic music for the most part is like dominated by toxic masculinity sort of shit. I don't really subscribe to that shit. But if you were gonna try to convince me that the bro tech techno whatever toxic male max masculinity thing was real this would be proof of it the fact that they're willing to boot a woman off for having racy political view opinions right but they're okay to keep a guy on the lineup for legitimately <laughs> assaulting other women 
Lord have mercy. Anyway, it continues. I don't blame movement for choosing Craig and I didn't want to make a fuss about it at the time. I didn't want to detract from the celebration of Detroit Techno, all the more special this year due to being the first movement since 2019 due to the pandemic and the first seen the summer of racial reckoning in 2020. To be fair, this is a little bit self-absorbed because I don't necessarily think most people... This is the thing I think is really bizarre and really strange when it comes to dance music. It's inherently political, right? Even though I don't like it and I don't want it to be, it is inherently political. But for whatever reason, it feels like to me the majority of the public don't give a fuck. The majority of the public have no idea that of the politics going on in the scene, like stuff that you might hear. Like let's let's say for instance like the Peggy Goo and the Daniel Wang situation that I covered ages ago. Do you think most fans of Peggy Goo give a shit about what happened with Daniel Wang? Do you think most Daniel Wang fans give a shit about what happened with Peggy Goo? None of them care. It doesn't affect their decision-making process when they're going to buy a ticket. It doesn't affect their um, love and adoration, admiration for those um, two artists and DJs. It doesn't do anything. It's only for like, like deep heads like us or people that give a shit about that sort of stuff that will kind of care. Most people don't really give a shit. So this idea that somehow a review of a festival is going to really negatively affect the success of it overall, eh, it's a little bit self-absorbed. It's a little bit self-important. But it's also intriguing that no one really cares to the level of women will come out and detail in excruciating forensic detail with corroborating witnesses, um, kind of whatever it may be, of their issues and their struggles and their trauma and the episode, whatever they went through. And no one will really care. It doesn't actually do anything. Like, it doesn't do much. Like, again, I love Jack Master. He's my guy and everything, right? But what Jack Master, he went through a situation too. And in, in the end, did anyone really care? Not really. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it just you just move on and continue, and people just continue going on their careers. It's a very strange thing. You would imagine a scene that would be rooted in some level of politics would be a little bit more um, sensitive to those kind of allegations and would treat them as seriously as, as they probably should treat them. But it doesn't necessarily happen that way. Who's the other guy too? There's another DJ too who's out there. Um, is it Vok or Volk or something like that? Vox or something? I forgot his name. Who's like a, f a legitimate neo-Nazi. <laughs> and he still plays places. He still makes music and shit. And it's like, ah? I don't know, man. I, I find it odd. I don't know what it is about dance music. I don't know if because most general public people or most normies just go to raves and festivals to get fucked up. Maybe that's the point of it. Maybe most people go. Like, if, 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 there's a, if, if you say your intentions are like in percentages. M maybe 70% of your intentions of going out, if you love dance music, you love electronic music, is maybe just to get fucked. It's not to actually listen to music. It's not to hear somebody DJ. It's not to see somebody. That's like by proxy, but you're mostly going to go and get fucked. Especially nowadays with like, in the post-pandemic world and recession looming, you want to just ignore your day-to-day -day struggles and kind of just black out and go out and do GHB, do care, do coke, do molly, do ecstasy, drink loads, you hook up with people. I think maybe that's why, but I, I, I really don't understand it. I really don't get it because those that article on RA with by Derek May was fucking brutal. Even if you don't believe it, you would imagine just the the stories alone would be enough smut to put on someone's name where you just wouldn't want to be next to them. It's too radioactive. But for some reason, you can kind of get away with it. Weirdly enough, it feels like. You can kind of just like, you know, you might have, it might be embarrassing that it's happened, but you can like, I think of, um, what's his name? Uh, fucking God bless the dead, but what's his name? Uh, who was accused of some crazy shit. What was his fucking name? That DJ guy that passed away. Mixed race dude. I forgot his name, but it comes to mind him as well. Something tells me that if he wasn't so stricken with guilt or whatever the reason is that he ended up kind of self-expiring, who's to say if he was still around, he could probably ride it out. Even though what he was accused of was flipping crazy, if he wanted to, he could probably ride it out if you look at what's happened to other people. That's the crazy thing about it. Like, there is nothing if I feel like a DJ could do legitimately that could get them quote-unquote cancelled. It doesn't look like it. Like, if Tiesto went out and shot someone in the back of the head tomorrow, right? He'd be fine. Like, he's still going to get booked in places. I legitimately think so. If Carl, if, if, what's, your, what's his name? He's the fucking guy that I hate that's always smiling with his gap teeth open or stuff. What's his name? Oh, whatever. That black guy, right? If he went, if he, he went and run someone over and he's fucking Range Rover Sport, he'd be fine. Carl Cox, right? He'd be completely fine. No one would absolutely bat an eyelid. I don't think so, personally. Um, but yeah, weirdly. Anyway, let's continue. It's kind of like MMA in that way. DJing 
the UFC. You feel that like UFC MMA is the same sort of thing. People don't really get cancelled for what they say. You can say some racist shit in the UFC MMA. Like, just the other day, this fighter flipping... He called... Um, what do you call Brazilian people? Rats or something, right? I don't know. He called something derogatory. Um, he obviously got smoked in his next fight, but still, he said it. And he wasn't cut. He wasn't dis disqualified or, you know, sacked or whatever. It was just, you know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, continue this. Article, article. It says, but I knew I couldn't let it slide completely. Craig banned me from reviewing the movement because of two investigations I wrote for resident advisor in November 2020 and January 2021. Detailing allegations of sexual assault and sexual harassment against his friend and mentor, DJ te techno um, producer, sorry, techno pioneer, Derek May. Craig banned me because I wrote on Twitter that he was in the bin along with May when the allegation first came out to my attention on September 2020 at the same time that I was investigating another sexual predator, late Eric Murillo. Oh, that's the guy, Eric Murillo. Craig was quick to come to the director's defense at the time and says, I don't turn my back on my brothers. It says, techno for life. Now, I don't, answer, I don't understand. I don't understand why. Hmm. Let me be fair. Let me be fair. I, I am not a fan of cancel culture which is weird to say this, right? I'm really not a fan of cancel culture in that I'm not a fan of like a gatekeeper or gatekeepers telling people who, like basically saying who can and cannot have a career. I feel like careers, especially in entertainment, especially careers that not, don't involve like a regular nine to five, a career kind of like in the arts or, you know, outside of a, a conventional corporate environment or workplace. I feel like those careers are usually built off the back of someone's hard work and their connection with their fans. So their fans discover them, they like what they do, they tell their friends, and then they kind of grow organically together, right? In that regard. So then if you go and then make a social faux pas, you go and film some, you know, you go and film someone in a suicide forest, you say nigga, nigga, nigga too much on your live stream, you have some derogatory statements to say about LGBTQ, LGBTQ plus community people, uh, you make some racial slur thing, whatever you may say, whatever you may say or do, I don't think those comments should constitute in you losing your career especially if you built your career off your own back with your fans. Now, if it means sponsors and um, production company people and whatever advertisers pulling away from you because you're bad for their business, that's one thing. But the industry coming together and saying, this guy can't get on playlist. This guy can't be booked on festivals everywhere. Festivals are not even connected to each other. That's the thing I have a problem with. That's the thing that I don't like. And I feel like nowadays, it feels like counter culture is more so geared towards let's try and take this person's career off of them as opposed to let's let the public know this person's a monster then the public can make a decision themselves and hopefully that person's career will die a slow death because i think that's what should happen i think your fans if fans can make your career fans should also be able to kind of take it away from you oh, i'm gonna go to screen the whole time oh sorry i didn't have a screen the whole time do you know what I mean? yeah i mean fans should be able to take it away from you you know it is the world fans should be able to be like hey we don't like what you did there your career is gone now that's what they should be able to do, I feel like. But nowadays, it feels like the power is too much in the industry's hands. Like they can decide you don't play festivals, you don't play clubs, you don't go on radio, you don't do this. And I feel like that's just too much in that respect. But I also feel like when it comes to certain allegations, even if it's your friend, you owe the victims who have come forward and just in terms of common decency to just keep your mouth shut. There's no need for Carl Craig to come out and say, I don't turn my back on my brothers and techno for life. It's nonsense. This guy wasn't accused of embezzling money. He wasn't accused of stealing equipment. He wasn't accused of flaking on DJ sets. He was accused of sexual assault and harassment, bruv. That's like some pretty crazy allegations. And they were very detailed, very extensive. They went through all that journalistic whatever thing they have to go through in terms of making sure they're legit and shit, corroborate with people, blah -de blah 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 double check, triple checked and whatnot. So for you to come out and be like, I don't tell them back my brothers because of sexual assault, that is insane. Maybe privately you should still stick with your friends. I, I, like, you know, I, I, I think... We have to be sensible and say, if you have a friend, you know, if you have friends in general, you should probably have an internal moral list or something where you say, okay, there are certain things if my friend does to me that I'm not ever going to forgive. Like if you're a girl, if your friend hooks up with your partner, you might be like, okay, cool. That's a complete deletion. You know what I mean, I'm not your friend anymore and it's on site every time I see you. If you're a guy, you might be like, oh, if my friend steals money from me or steals something, a bit of clothing, that's an instant, do you know what I mean? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bang you up and you're not my guy anymore. It's certain things you should have in your list. And if it's one of your lists, it's like, okay, if my friend ever gets accused of something involving S-A, you know, S-H, R-word, whatever it may be, touching kids and shit, you're completely deleted. I mean, you're off and you're done. Go away from me. 
unless there's some mitigating consequences or story that he read the wrong signs, he was this, he was, whatever. But usually you should have your list of things. But the fact that you don't have it, it makes you look more sus as well. It makes you even look probably worse than the person that's been accused of it. If you're the one that's going to go out and say, nah, man, that's my boy. And he's been accused of R and SA and SH. You're like, yo, that is next level. Because if anything, what that does to me, similar to what happened to the whole Brian Callan, Chris D'Elia situation when they were crying and Brendan Shaw was for crying when Chris D'Elia went down for being accused of, you know, maybe trying to hook up with too many young girls or girls that are on the cusp of being legal and not legal. Usually when you're crying and you're really emotional about your friend getting taken out of something like that so crazy, it usually means you have your own crazy stuff in your own skeleton. You have your own crazy skeleton in your own closet. Usually, you'd imagine so. Because no normal person would have that sort of reaction because it's not you. Do you know what I mean? Like, why, were you, why are you crying and shaking? Like, you didn't do nothing wrong. It's horrible and heinous. You should be in shock, maybe. You should maybe have nothing to say. You should be maybe find it hard to find your words and to articulate what you feel like. But crying and convulsing, and <laughs> it means you probably have your own skeletons in your closet too. So the fact that you're typing in all caps, I don't tell my back of my brothers, that makes you look a bit sussy. But also... If you're Annabelle Ross, I would say, as much as I like her, I don't think you should be saying someone's in the bin because they decided to back their friend. It's gross, it's disgusting, but they didn't, you have no evidence that they did a thing. Do you know what I mean? It's, let's keep the focus on the guy that actually did it. Um, oh, what did it say? And, and I, I guess it's someone. Uh, okay, and, and then he made it. Obviously, so, so it looks like from Carl Craig's point of view, he just doesn't believe the allegations because this tweet says here as follows. It's from 2020, I guess, somewhere around that time. It says, social media is just like being back in grade school where rumours are passed around as truth with no proof. It's incredible how people will freely believe accusations by someone they don't personally know. Ask yourself what these people contribute to our world. So that's a weird statement to make because it feels like people that make those kind of statements, I feel like are just trying to um, convince themselves that what their friend did what their friend's been accused of, they didn't do because it obviously looks bad on you too because you're their friend and you didn't know that they were a monster behind closed doors. But if you take it on face value, what that means is that he's basically saying, unless you get proven guilty in a court of law by a jury, then you're innocent always, which is insane because if you heard a rumor about your friend in the area, you know, our wording someone, would you need to see proof in order to believe it? Or maybe would you say that guy was always a bit sus anyway? And just to veer on the side of caution, and because I could get friends anywhere, and it's not that serious, I'm going to probably cut him out of my life because I don't want to be associated with somebody who even has that sort of smart on their name, unless he's able to really convince me and sit me down and say, hey, Ag, listen, this story is not true, this what happened, blah, blah, blah. But most of the time, do you need proof all the time to convince yourself that someone's a dickhead? That someone might be a piece of shit? Really? Like, come on. Anyway, it continues. I can understand Craig wanted to support May, especially given the impact that he's had on Craig's career, life and trajectory, and in trying to defend Detroit techno legacy they're both integral to, a legacy that has historically been obscured by the rise of over overwhelmingly white electronic music. But Craig, who has been close to May for nearly 40 years, doesn't need to read the articles to know that May has been mistreating women for decades. True. So they're trying to do some sort of some Black Lives Matter, Detroit, uh, you know, techno is black sort of cultural sort of solidarity thing, which is fucking bizarre to try and use. Again, this is Annabelle Ross kind of including her own idea of why she thinks that it's not Craig saying it. But if that is the case, that is fucking nuts. That is legitimately nuts. <laughs> but anyway, it continues. Um, it takes off this course tomorrow. Um, but Craig, who has been close to May for nearly 40 years, doesn't need to read articles. And it's, tis, and it's this bros before hoes mentality, particularly prevalent in electronic music, that makes it so hard to hold abusers such as May accountable for their behavior. Um, it's the brotherhood that makes them stay quiet after witnessing or hearing about the abuse, fearing repercussions in the form of losing bookings or record deals or simply being ostracized from the community. It's the brotherhood that makes it possible for men in the industry to abuse women while continuing to collect fat paychecks. It's the brotherhood that encourages men uh, um, around abusers to turn a blind eye to bad behavior, especially when they're also making profits. Boom! Annabelle Ross coming with the fucking blows. No, I believe that. I definitely do believe that, especially if this is occurring on this side of the thing right where these guys i wouldn't say they're the most like commercially famous people they're obviously legacy acts in terms of well known but in terms of being at the top of the kind of uh, you know relevancy circuit and all the instagram pages and shit these aren't the most famous teachers in the world so if they're willing to do this 
with themselves, right? And police each other this way and kind of turn a blind eye and not say anything. Just imagine what's going on with the tech house people, with the EDM people who are up at the top, who are the dance with the techno, uh, techno people, with the hardcore people, wherever it may be. Just imagine what's going on over there. Just imagine what's going on over there day to day. It must be fucking insane. Um, anyway, it continues. In Detroit, belonging to a brotherhood also means preserving the mythical status of Detroit techno, and there are a few figures more central to that myth than Derek May. This part weekend, toxic male solidarity really is head again when another Detroit hero, Omar S. Oh, no! I love Omar S. Oh, come on, man! Come on! Don't tell me Omar S. is a freak as well. Come on! Okay, let's continue. Omar S tagged me in a post shared on Instagram page on Saturday afternoon. Although I had been banned from reviewing, I still went to Detroit and went to Movement, along with some other parties held over the weekend. Ooh, Annabelle putting herself in the flipping eye of the fire on the belly of the beast. He continues, I had seen Smith, one of my favorite producers, play. Oh, at Marble Bar on Memorial Day. When we ran into him in the smoke area, we took a group photo, fangirling shamelessly. Smith didn't know who I was at the time, but after seeing my photo on Instagram, Derek May gave him a heads up. Oh, no. In response, Smith had taken a screenshot of my group photo and passed an image of May over my friend's face next to my own. Derek May was written across the top of the photo. The caption read, these ladies support Derek May, guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> May commented on the post with free crying laughter emojis and shared the post in his stories. Smith post gathered 100 likes by the time I woke up on Sunday morning, the post was gone. Yeah, that's the thing with Derek with Omar S. He's one of those he's one of those um guys who loves to post and delete. Guys who post and delete are always sussy anyway, man. If you're going to be spicy and you're going to do like girly bitchy shit like this where you crop pictures and you're putting things like like just pure neek lame nerd behavior, stand on it and leave it up on your page. Why are you deleting it for? Why are you taking it down for? Do you know what I mean, if you really want to be fuck resident advisor guy, then you know what I mean, like go all the way to it. But the fact they delete it is a bit sussy, but this is so so bad. <laughs> oh mate these guys are fucking insane so fuck resident advisor for what like why doesn't oh my Israel like resident advisor like honestly some of these the, 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 the dance music logic is fucking insane I can't get out of my head that Nina Kravitz is easier to kick off a lineup for having racy controversial edgelord 4chan type fucking political opinions right again it's gross what she's into she likes Putin she's supporting the invasion of Ukraine probably but she's also not picking up a fucking AK-47 do you know what I mean she's doing it from the lap of luxury of her apartment in her silk grove in her amazing apartment listening to good music and with her great label and her great life she's not really got any skin in the game that's easier to kick off a lineup than somebody who legitimately has been accused of assaulting and abusing people. Like, God almighty. And then you've got his friends who are also got these really interesting and somewhat eye-opening and refreshing opinions on dance music and the industry and the media around it in terms of fuck resident advisor thing that Omar um, is on. But then they're also comfortable with backing their guy who's been accused of essaying and, and SH for fucking women. It's fucking nuts. And then they take the piss out of one of the journalists that read the article. It's just like, oh my God, bro. Like, this isn't even trolling. This is just like, what? what is it? Is this like enabling? Is this excusing? Um, what is this behavior? Like, what? what is this? What is this? And it, like, it's interesting. Like, how, how can you, how can you stand there and complain about techno being whitewashed? Complain about the commercialization of the music? Complain about gentrification? Complain about the politics, complain about the gatekeepers, all this sort of stuff concerning techno. But then when it comes to policing your own friends for heinous crimes, you want to turn a blind eye under the guise of like, because it wouldn't be surprised me if some of these guys have, have the opinion of like, oh, why are we cancelling Derek if there's XYZ white guy DJs who also do this shit, have a career, no one cancels them. It's like, huh? So what now? We Are we now saying that unless you're, <laughs> unless you abuse somebody and you're white, then, like, if you be someone but you're black, you have to be protected because you don't get representation in this industry. It's like, like it, it hurts your brain even to fucking work that out and try to make it make sense in your head. I understand in some way, if you look at it and say, hey, if Guy Gerber still got a career, why does my career have to get cancelled? I understand in that respect, fair enough. But, like I said beforehand, I'm not a fan of cancel culture in terms of the industry cancelling you. I'm a fan of your fans saying, you're a fucking piece of shit, we're not going to support you anymore. Cool. 
So maybe, unfortunately, if Guy Gerber is so famous that he's most of his majority of his fans don't actually know about whatever allegations he's been accused of, and he still has a career, that's sad and unfortunate, but it's the nature of the beast because he's just too famous. You know what I mean, he's, he's at a level where like the fans just don't give a fuck. Like who's that? Who's that? Who's that country music star recently who was um, you know, fucked off his head, was dropped back, you know, was take was on the way back to his friend's house or whatever or his house, and I guess he started just like calling his friends niggers and shit and n bombs and with hard R's and shit, right? And it was a pretty heinous video to see, but you know he's clearly fucked, and you know maybe it wasn't cancel worthy, but it didn't really do anything to his career. If anything, it propelled his music. Do you know what I mean his streams went up in a crazy way because most of his fans don't care that he calls his white friends niggers because they don't care. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna then start saying because a black person says something similar that they, I, I don't know? I just can't. I just can't. My brain hurts trying to figure it out because it doesn't make any sense. And these are all adults with children, by the way. These are all grown ups. Like they're far older than me. Like these guys are in their fifties and shit, and they're like, I don't know. I don't know. Later on Sunday afternoon, a friend let me on a new post. Craig had shared a same group photo from Marble Bar with Mace face superimposed over my friends. Says, "I support niggers. I support niggers from Detroit." Jan read the caption again. It attracted a few hundred likes and shared by Smith and May in Instagram stories. When I woke up Monday, the post to see Derek, bruv, Carl Craig, all these guys that uh, they're just pussies, bruv. Like, leave the thing up, leave the thing up. If you're gonna be edge lord and support your friend for fucking SA and SH, which is fucking nuts, nuts. In my head, in my head, I've always said I'd probably, I'd probably excuse my friend from murder over flipping sexual assault. Number one, because sexual assault thing is just like. You know what I mean, like, I can't be your friend anymore. But the murder stuff, like, legitimately, there might be a, there might be a, there might be a reason. You might have, you might have duppied your fucking school bully. You might have to defend your family or some shit. You know what I mean, there could be context to it. But SA, like Giza, like R, oh, like really, 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 this is what we're doing. We're defending our friend, or or do we generally believe that this is not true? In some weird, like you know, those kind of like um, preachers in Christian churches and shit, when they get accused of diddling kids, and the congregation's like, "Nah, it can't be him. He's a godly man. He's a saint. He's an angel." It's like maybe that's got what they've got. They've got this like techno delirium, um, Detroit techno delirium syndrome, where they're like, "It cannot be true. He's part of the crew." Oh, it's like fuck off. Anyway, it continues. The message they were trying to send between me was clear. However, don't fuck with Detroit. Uh, however, yeah, don't fucking trip. I think they were probably pretty riled up. I had um, the necessity to visit the city after publishing something unflattering about one of the giants of Dietrich Techno and to post a photo of Omar S. I don't think it was by chance either that their post coincided with the world premiere of Dietrich Techno documentary so God Said Give Him Drum and Machines at Tribeca Festival, which I attended on Saturday night. Nah, again, I, would, I don't think... Do you reckon... But yeah, who knows, man? If you're willing to cut and copy and paste in people's pictures over yours and make snarky posts, maybe you are capable of doing that shit as well. Continues. Last one I posted about the film on Twitter, having heard of allegations against May, would not be addressed in the documentary. Also, <laughs> after reaching out to the filmmaker, someone responded to my email telling me that the allegations would, would be acknowledged, and they were very brief at the end of the film, concluding with a statement that said denies any wrongdoing. That's true, of course, but to me, the statement. Okay, this is what I don't like. I get Annabelle Ross did a great um, article in terms of addressing the allegations against him and whatnot, but I don't like this idea of like following him around media wise and getting people to maybe take down the thing, delete him from it. You know what I mean, because yes, he got accused of what he's getting accused of and he's most likely a creep. But if there's a documentary coming out focusing on just the music, I don't know, like let them tell that story. You know what I mean, you, like it's like I always think like whenever people pass away who are very controversial divided opinion who have that a very checkered past for instance if, if god forbid mike tyson passed away tomorrow i don't think every documentary should include why he went to prison if they want to have a documentary that just focuses on his growing up in new york before you know under the age of 18 do that if you want to focus on him when he was just finishing his career do that if you want to focus on him when to when he got that face tattoo do that but it shouldn't always have to include the bad controversial bits all the time i feel that's a bit ott i think sometimes documentaries that do that it gets a bit annoying do you know what i mean like we know we know do you know what i mean like it's like as crazy as it sounds like if somebody was to make a documentary about r kelly's influence on music should all of these documentaries have to focus on the sorry on the crime that he committed in terms of abusing all those young girls no, because he's, you know, he put, he put like for a brief 
brief period of his time, he was a musical genius. And of course, he did all those fucking heinous acts. Yes, they're going to define him, but in terms of telling a story from a filmmaker's point of view, they should be able to tell. It's like, it's like if you're painting something. You shouldn't have to, if you're going to paint a landscape, it doesn't mean you have to paint the entire landscape. You can just paint a particular um, frame that you want to kind of highlight and kind of blow up and make it big so it kind of takes up the whole space. Do you understand kind of something? It's a bit crazy to say that, but I do think that's the case. And I think following people around doing stuff, it makes it, it's a bit weird in that regard. That's the only thing I don't like personally. Um, but again, maybe when it comes to this article, maybe it touched the writer so much that they legitimately have like a personal... Um, they kind of feel like it's their personal mission to kind of see it through. And that's where sometimes it kind of can get blurred when you're a journalist, do you know what I mean? Because it's something maybe you might have suffered from in the past or whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, I can understand the rigor behind it, but I do get the filmmakers maybe insistence of kind of being like, hey, we're not involved in that. We're just trying to tell a story about Detroit Techno. Blah, 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 blah. It continues. Um, da, 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 da. That's true of me, of course. That's true. Of course, but to me, this statement was weighed towards uh, defending May and the previous 90 plus minutes of the documentary in which May plays a, st a starring role and is cast as techno plus a fan comedian. <laughs> yeah, that must be disgusting. Imagine if you're a victim of, of what he's been accused of and you got him on a fucking documentary giggling and smiling about high hats and bass lines and shit. Like, what? <laughs> fucking hell, honestly. Like, people, it's just. It really does surprise me how little people care, especially when you think of like the society, the societal side of things, and the social justice side of things. And it comes with dance music, electronic music. Like people don't give a fuck. They really don't. Like you can get accused of whatever, and people really don't care. The woman May is alleged to have abused along the way. Uh, felt like um, an afterthought, a, mem a momentary disclaimer buried underneath reams of li uh, lionizing footage. And before the innocent proven until guilty brigade comes at me, consider just a free. Yeah, that those type of people are the worst, personally for me. The ones who are fans of people and say innocent until proven guilty are the worst. I'd much rather you just say, if you're a Derek May fan, I'd much rather you just say, look, I'm a fan of his music. I don't let the uh, what do you call it? I don't. I don't. What's up? What's up? People, afraid people say. I don't, um, I don't like to mix the art and the artist. I just focus on the art. That's what I'm a fan of. Everything he does outside of it, I don't care. Then you saying, oh, bro, it's until proven guilty. Who says the allegations are true? What evidence is there? They're all anonymous. Like, that, is, that, that drives me insane. Because it's like, what, you need... Does, do, do all allegations need to be run through the court of law before you, are, like, you, you might think there might be some credence to it? Unless it's proven guilty in a, in a, in a court of law by a unanimous jury, you're never going to flip and believe it. Are you for real? Like, come on, man. How many sussy stories have we heard of people in ends from hoods that you've grown up in? I've had many freaky, dodgy people that you've heard. Oh, yeah, this guy touches up kids. Oh, yeah, this guy did this. guy did this. You don't wait for them to go to prison. You either fucking hear the story and keep away from them. Or when you see them again, you just rush them and beat them up. Do you know what I mean? You don't wait for someone to tell you, oh, they're guilty. Now you're going to do it. It's like, fuck off, man. You've been accused of that shit. You've got a smut on your name. It's up to you to prove yourself innocent as opposed to me to kind of believe you off the bat. Like, why do I owe you that benefit of the doubt? <clears throat> Especially with fans too. You don't, you don't know these people. That's a, maybe a parasocial relationship as well. Innocent to proven guilty. Maybe to your friends and your family, but to a random DJ who would never give you guest list. <laughs> I mean, a DJ that's not, that's not kind, like not a kind person. You're, you're doing this to It's like, what? Anyway, it continues. Um, Consider just 310 of every 100,000 sexual assaults are reported to the police. 50 of those reports will lead to an arrest and 28 cases will lead to a felony conviction. That's just a 2.8% um, sexual assaults that will lead to a criminal charge. The criminal justice system has always been stacked against survivors when it comes to prosecuting sexual assault. Of course, of course. So this idea that somehow because just because it happened to you and you go to the police that person is going to be found guilty is nuts and insane. Um, especially when you consider the, the fucking dehumanizing you know, situations and they have to go through as women when you kind of have to kind of, you know, give evidence and rape kits and shit. And if you wash before, you might destroy the evidence. Like, all these sort of weird shit happens that really kind of hinders the possibility of convicting somebody. Someone to say, oh yeah, man, it's until proven guilty, bro. Like, come on. There are many more allegations against Derek May than those you read out um, in these two articles and more serious ones. I couldn't write about all of them and all the foul tactics employed by May and his team to try and undermine me and the survivors, but I thought the nine direct accounts of assault or harassment or the more sexually appropriate behavior across two and fact checks and legally would be people considering their events of May. That's why I don't like. It sounds a bit like she went into it hoping to cancel his career, which I don't think you should have that in your mind. You should have it in your mind 
I'm going to expose and maybe highlight or shine a light on this dark side of this person's personality that no one actually sees. And then you can make your decision up as fans and as industry people. But this idea that I'm going to go on a personal crusade to end the person's career, I'm not really down for personally, in my opinion. I feel like if the fans don't give a fuck, like legitimately, look, if you're able to make article together and corroborate these witnesses and put together these accounts and fans don't care and industry doesn't care, you can't, there's nothing much more you can do. Really isn't. Like, what more can you do? If people still keep booking him, if he keeps getting featured in documentaries and his friends keep defending him online, there's nothing else that you can do personally, unfortunately. It's horrible and it's disgusting, but that's just the way of the beast. Like, did you, don't, don't you guys remember all those crazy aunties outside of fucking R. Kelly's court um, case when he was getting convicted? My man was feeling guilty of multiple sexual assaults and it was known for ages anyway that he was a bit of a creep. Yet they were still defending him outside, not to believe in the victims, saying he did nothing wrong saying the victims are whores, like, you know, what's, what's that thing called, they say, um, slut shaming, all that sort of stuff. It happens all the time. And unfortunately, if R. Kelly was out right now and he went on tour, he'd sell that bitch out. Or at least he'd sell tickets. Maybe not sell it all out, but he would, people would go to see him play for sure, for 100% sure. He might get some collaborations along the way for sure. I believe it, sure. So it's an unfortunate side of society, but I just don't like the personal vendettas and crusade people have in terms of cancer people. I think it's a bit gross, personally, for me. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't want one person to be like the judge and jury for my career. I'd much rather, it, okay, cool. I did something heinous, did something bad, and then my fans decide we don't want to fuck with you. The sponsors run away, the advertisers run away. That's fair enough. But the industry saying, hey, we're going to delete your record label contract because you did this thing. Unless it's, again, unless it's fucking murder and shit like i don't know man like it's a bit weird i don't know it's a bit it's a bit weird it's a bit weird because i'd imagine if you're a dj do you have do you even have a contract do you have a clause in your contract that says if you do something like you know like normal employment contract it says if you do something um, what's that term called again what's that term when you're contract when you're employed if you do something um if you do something really bad like i don't know you don't turn up for work you still equipment. I mean, they have a, they have means to basically terminate your contract on on the spot. I don't think DJs have that, do they? Because what contract do you sign? Maybe with your agency, maybe with your manager, your managing management team. It's very difficult, I'd imagine, to like actually cancel someone's career as a DJ. Anyway, really, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be? I don't know. Because you got someone like a six nine is a good example. He's kind of cancelled in hip hop, right? But if he decided to just focus on reggaeton and just dominate the latin co countries or communities he'd be fine if he decided to come to europe and just start making music here he'd be fine too i don't people would actually care about the snitching thing in the u.s i don't think so do you know what i mean and it's a completely different industry it might be the same labels but it's a different industry and business in europe and in latin america than it is in north america you'd imagine but it continues let me end this before I keep rambling. I can understand why fans would want to believe that May is innocent or to downplay the allegations. Ignorance literally is bliss when it comes to our musical heroes and being able to dance freely to tracks that have brought us such joy. But I can tell you that the women who claim to have been abused by May can't hear strings of life without being reminded of their trauma. Yeesh. I can't enjoy his music either anymore and Carl Craig lost me as a fan after our Twitter spat nearly two years ago. Just a fortnight after I visited the party after party, sound installation in Dia, being in, in Dia Beacon Museum upstate New York. After the months of nightlife being shuttered down to the pandemic party after party um, which recreated the sound atmosphere of the techno bunker with visceral intensity in a museum basement made me cry tears of joy fast forward a couple of weeks and this man who I admired as an artist for years was suddenly an enemy and my visit to Dia, to Dia, to Dia Beacon sorry, um, what had easily been my favourite experience of 2020 was a tarnished memory, I'm generally gutted that Omar S's music is now technically for me too, yeah fuck you know she's losing everyone isn't it it's not surprising that Carl Craig um that Craig Smith, that, that Craig and Smith would want to support May, a child-based and black musician whose success paved the way for their own, but to do it publicly and mocking the slap in the face of the survivors of abuse everywhere. It's a damning display of toxic male solidarity in a scene where women, trans and non-binary people are used to, are used to coming last. Which is that's the thing. If you don't believe that bro culture exists, then this this whole affair is definitely illuminating, isn't it? Because But again, maybe on their side of things, they generally don't think he did anything wrong. That might be this. That might be honestly what it is. They generally might think the story and allegation against him are not true, and it's all just lies. 
Um, it continues. Four days into Detroit, I was barely enough to scratch the surface of the city, but it's more than enough people to observe the resilience, whose endurance to uh, continue, continue. Techno's black pioneers have long fought for recognition, worth protecting, but so are women. So who have been um, overlooked, unappreciated, and or abused since dance music inception. Childish toxic displays of male solidarity, like the post shared by Carl Craig and Omar S over the weekend, and Craig banning me from writing about the festival reinforced the idea that women's role is to percept the position of sub subjugation and to stay quiet about anything that might threaten my dominance at whatever, whatever cost. I said it before, a sincere apology to May would have gone a long way, a long, long way, coupled with genuine contrition and commitment to seek therapy for his behaviour, but we've seen nothing of the sort, just denial, offensive attempts at by May to cast allegations as racism and defying campaign to try to resurrect his tanking career. It's possible to celebrate Detroit techno at the same time to demand accountability at the, from the figures in the scene who have abused their power. Without it, their legacy is threatened, but, that not, but that's not my fault, not the fault of the women who bravely chose to share their stories. The only people they can blame for this is themselves. Scathing report here from um, Annabelle Ross. Actually, let me see. Has he actually played anywhere, Derek? I don't, I don't even know. Let's see. Um, Derek May, resident advisor. Yeah. Let's see if he's actually had any sets anywhere recently. Because you said his career is tanking. I don't know. Is it, is it tanking? Has he played since those allegations? I'm assuming he probably has, isn't it? But as well, with these production credits anyway, he probably makes a lot of bank off of these old tunes, so it won't really matter, innit? Let's see. Past events. What has he actually DJed at recently? Oh, yeah, he played in June. So that museum gala thing. He played in April. Oh, it's been, it's been, it's been, it's been tough, isn't it? According to what we see here, because I'd assume maybe sometimes he might be a secret guest on some liners, but according to what we see on RA, he's played one, he's played twice this year only, in June and April. April, an upstart blockbuster in Munich, he played alongside Dwayne A. Kims, Derek May, Kevin Saunderson. So yeah, loads of Detroit people there. Fucking hell, man. It's absolutely been crickets for my man, isn't it? absolute crickets but yeah um i do recommend you check out the article really really good article from annabelle ross again one of um my favorite writers in this dance music scene collectively overall i feel like she definitely is somebody who legitimately comes at it from a fa as a fan who happens to be a journalist as opposed to just a journalist you know looking to you know um looking for a bit of fame looking to catch some notoriety i think that that's what kind of separates her writing from most people out there and i definitely recommend you check it out it's available on medium it's called on derek may techno detroit techno and toxic Mas toxic solidarity sorry i'll put the link of the article in the description of the show so you can check it out if you are that way in